A particle is moving in a horizontal circle of radius 10 meters with a constant speed of 35 meters per second. Find angular velocity and acceleration. Okay, hit pause. You can see I've translated the question. They haven't said uniform circular motion. They haven't said that phrase. What is it in the question that tells me it's uniform circular motion? There's two pieces of information I really need. Number one, it says circle, so I know it's circular motion. And then what's the uniform part? Constant speed. Yeah, constant speed. Now they've said, uh, I lost it, where is it? <clears throat> they've said constant speed. I have translated that to say linear velocity, right? Can anyone tell me why I did that? Why is that a good idea for us to do? Because the tangent is changing. Okay, very good. It's constantly changing direction, right? I want to define what it is I'm talking about. So if they're talking about speed, and notice the units, right? It's meters per second. So it's clearly not angular velocity, right? In fact, that's why they ask us for angular velocity in a second. One more thing to note before we go on. Acceleration. Now, interestingly, they haven't specified a direction, right? Like acceleration this way or acceleration that way. So that means I need to include not just the size, the magnitude, the value of the acceleration, but I also need to say which way it's pointing, okay? Now, I'm just gonna let that sort of percolate in the back of your mind at the moment. Don't forget, it's uniform circular motion. So that means you know something very obvious about the acceleration along the tangent. Don't tell me what it is yet, just see if you remember it. That kind of tells you, all right, this gives me an idea of what direction I should head in, okay? So, let's begin. I want to get to angular velocity omega, right? What was omega a uh, shorthand for? What, what is it actually? It's d theta, it's d -theta on, dt. on dt, very good. It's how the angle is changing with respect to time. Okay, So that's where I'm headed. I don't have anything in terms of angles, but I do have this guy, okay? So this is linear velocity, linear velocity. So how is how are linear velocity and angular velocity connected to each other? Yeah, they're proportional with respect to the radius, but maybe you don't have all of the, there are quite a few results now which are actually quotable, but maybe you don't have them all bedded down in your mind. So where I began this question was to say, this guy here, linear velocity. Yeah. It is, as a derivative, I'm going to say it's, this is sort of ruling this off, it's dl on dt where l is the arc length. Right? So that's what's changing, that's the distance which I can measure in meters. Okay? So DL and DT is 35 um, Okay, so I've introduced this, this printing rule, so I've got to say what it is. Now the wonderful thing about using L, uh, rather than X or whatever, is because remembering that it's arc length, I can connect it back to theta very easily, right? Because based on radian measure, L of course is r theta. Very good. r theta. Like so, right? I know what the value of r is, and it's a constant that I can pull out the front. So I'm going to do that in one here. That's 10, that's r, and I've removed it out of the derivative because it's just a constant coefficient. That's 35. So now you can tell me what omega is. 3.5 3 what? Radians per second. Okay, so that was not complicated. The, the maths of it is not too difficult. Okay, now I have, yeah, I've got just enough space. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> jam it in here because I want this space for question six. Now I have to think about acceleration. Okay, now remember before I sort of teased to you before, this doesn't have a direction attached to it, so we've got to work out the direction. So you have to pick a direction, right? Um, you could talk about x, y, you could talk about, well, apart from horizontal vertical, how else could you describe? What other directions could we choose from? You've got along the tangent of the, of the motion or along the normal of the motion, okay? Now it's uniform circular motion. And we went through, we looked at the horizontal, vertical, we did all the trig, we resolved forces, and we, we came up with this surprising, but then it made sense result, for uniform circular motion, along the tangent, right? What acceleration is being experienced? And the answer is zero, because you're always staying on the tangent, right? With respect to this tangent, which is constantly shifting around, right? With respect to the tangent, it's kind of like you're being treated like a uh, uniform straight line motion, right? Uniform straight line motion, which if you imagine, like imagine if it's a big enough circle, 
right? It's a big enough circle. And you've got like a planet orbiting around. What does that planet feel like it's doing? And the answer is it feels like it's moving in a straight line, right? At any given point, inertial frame of reference, etc. So therefore, given that this acceleration <coughs> along the tangent, I know that's zero, what else can I look at? What might be meaningful? Like that's not very meaningful. No. Yeah, acceleration along the normal. Whoops, sorry. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna find out, okay? Now please note, it's not the normal force, it's the acceleration on the normal, right? What's the relationship between force and acceleration? F equals, F equals MA, right? So the first thing I'm gonna write, uh, yeah, this is A. The first thing I'm gonna write for part B is F, I am gonna write F, because this is like the F equals MA of circular motion is F equals, zero. remember, starts with a negative. This is M R omega squared, right, very good, okay? It is negative because along the normal, it's, it's facing in towards the center, okay? Now if that's the force, the force is just acceleration with mass attached to it, yes? So if I want the acceleration along the normal, then what do I have to change? Yeah, just divide by mass, just this guy. This is quotable too, but I like to do that first line because it's kind of like, I always start with forces and this is an easy thing to remember and it shows I understand the difference between these two. It's not like it takes me a long time to do. Okay, once I've written that, all this requires is just a tiny bit of substitution. I know what the radius is, I know what omega is. <coughs> 3.5 squared, someone got it? Okay, so this is 12.25, 12.25, you multiply it by 10, which gives you that number there, okay? Now, I've got a value, right? But remember I said, you need more than just the value, you need to tell me where this is going, right? I know what axis it's going along, and I know the direction along that axis that it's going, right? So how would I summarize, therefore, acceleration is? Okay, 122.5, it's acceleration, so the units are meters per second per second, right? In what direction? Towards the center. Towards the center, perfect. Awesome, okay. So you see, we looked at how this was related to forces, we just crunched the numbers, and then we interpreted this along with this. It's so great, right? You can see which way am I looking at, therefore along that axis, which way am I facing, and that's how you explain it verbally. Make sense? So, so yeah. they ask for acceleration, it's always acceleration. No, no it's not. So if I just say acceleration, right? It's like, well, which direction are you going, okay? Now you can see it's pointless to say this because it's like, Oh, there's, you wouldn't say there's no acceleration along the, along the tangent because that's not the thing that makes it do what it's doing, right? It's this that makes it do what it's doing. So therefore, I mean, you can say that. It's true. It's just not meaningful in this context, okay? Um, can you use centripetal force for the mp squared of r? Ah, yes. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. In fact, is it one of the examples I picked out? Mm. I don't think it is one of the ones I picked out, but I'm happy to do it. Uh, I can get to that if you like. Um, I would, is it the 12? Oh, yeah. um, I would, I would always, as much as possible, come back to this and then get, like for example, mv squared on r. It comes from this. It obviously comes from this because omega, it's just, you just got the uh, v equals r omega. That's where that relationship comes from. So I prefer to come back to this because it demonstrates I know where this comes from and I can manipulate the result rather than I just memorize something and I, I Often students who do this, they just memorize it wrong. Or they memorize it correctly, but then use it wrong, because like, I don't know, it's just a memorized result. I don't know what to do with it, okay?